very very positive sentiments and uh, majority of them basically asking uh, they want to know from us uh, basically our status of economy right now and uh, how do we look uh, forward uh, in 2017 and uh, I told them we are very positive in 2017. If you look at uh, most of the negative elements that we are facing right now, it's already been factored into our economy. So we give them how um, uh, we look at uh, diversification of our economy. And uh, I think almost all the senior people that I met this morning, the one hour is quite positive. But are they asking for any tweaks in the government policies or any announcements? Well, not really. I think basically they've seen that we have done the right thing. For example, like, you know, structurally, we have implemented our GST, which some of the oil producing companies are actually struggling to implement that. We have done much earlier. And then we have done a rationalization of subsidies. And we continue to give subsidies, but we give targeted subsidies to those people who deserve to get that subsidies. And then uh, many more that actually in the pipeline are told them that we look at it. And uh, we try to manage this government as efficient as possible to make sure that you know, uh, we can bring our economy to the next level. So, so it's already just. Can double check you the 4.3% growth positive. Uh, target for you mentioned it was next year in 2018 or is it actually no I mean you look at the budget the budget I think you have to base on the budget the budget have uh, when we prepare the budget we, we forecast between four to five percent right and globally if you look at globally I think uh, uh, the World Bank and IMF also have projected a growth in the global economy and uh, trade the global trade also has increased so we hope that you know being an open economy we should benefit from our export. No, that, that's what I mean is that just when you mentioned it's uh, 2000, uh, you said next year, next year is it 2018? Yeah, 2017. Yeah. 2017, okay. Uh, the third quarter of this year is about 4.3%. It's already January. Uh, just to know, are we heading towards a uh, recalibrated budget? No. Are we heading towards recalibrated No recalibrated budget. Why we should have a recalibrated budget? I mean, ringgit is low. No. And, uh, well, ringgit is low. I think this is the factor that I think the economy will adjust accordingly. But fundamentally, uh, I still think that it's, it's, it, our economy is okay. Uh, it's just that we need to give time so everybody to do that adjustment. And uh, the market will come back, currency will strengthen again. And uh, you must uh, remember, if you look at uh, in uh, 2013, uh, approximately our average uh, oil price uh, that uh, is in the region of 100. And then 2014 is about 90. And then uh, 2015, we have dropped to 50. And then 2016, is worse. We are about 44. So basically, all revenue, even though uh, you know they are no longer become a significant uh, revenue to the government uh, as compared to 2009, which is about 41 percent of our total revenue uh, in as far as government is concerned. Today, in 2016, there's only about 14 percent. But nevertheless, I think the correlation with all this income that the government get from all this oil uh, revenue uh, is still uh, uh, play a major factor in our currency. If you look at uh, our currency is very uh, three something, you know, uh, at that time our I average uh, uh, oil price is about 110. So obviously, when your average is now down to 44, uh, to a certain extent, it will affect our currency. And uh, and of course, I think another factor. Uh, when you see uh, President uh, Trump uh, that uh, have, uh, uh, you know, basically trying to formulate an economy in U.S. to be inward driven, uh, certainly they need more money. And obviously, I think the only way that they will be able to get the money is by increasing the yield. When they're increasing the yield and the whole uh, uh, spectrum of uh, investment climate in Asia in particular will slowly change because uh, people go for better yield on the U.S. And this is not only ours, I think. You look at China, you look at uh, some of the countries in this region also affected. But uh, at least I think uh, our economy is well diversified. Uh, we don't really uh, feel it uh, uh, like uh, some other countries feel, like Arab Saudi, for example, you know, they go worse. Because the economy is not diversified. Our economy is very diversified. Our, today, our GDP, 53% are actually uh, come from the service sector, and then uh, manufacturing is 23%, uh, and uh, oil and gas is about 9%, agriculture is about 8%, and construction is about 4%. I think 
this, with this solid fundamental, you know, and uh, if you can, uh, we can send a very positive note outside there. I think uh, there's not much option that they have in this region and looking at our country. Right? You mentioned a bit about currency, yeah. so is the ringgit's weakness now still a major concern for, for the government? Well, I think, uh, you know, of course, I think any any government, any government in the world, that uh, if you have uh, currency that, you know, uh, uh, come down so drastically, uh, you need to do some uh, uh, management on that. I mean, you need to do some adjustment on that. But nevertheless, I think uh, because our policy is actually upon, uh, open economy. When we are open economy, we are not going to do any pegging. We, we, we will not control our capital flow. We allow any investor that want to take their money out, they can take, just take. So, so we, you know, we have a good uh, reserve. We still have a, a reserve of 94 billion, which can sustain us for eight months import. You know, so I think we are quite we are quite okay. I think it's okay. I think slowly, I think you will see one the noises out there is, is settle down. Uh, you know, once the U.S. settle down, interest rate are very definitive. Uh, then I think people will come back.